All right, welcome back. It's part two of Frankie's first, of my first uh, uh, Q&A, question I answer, where I ask you, the YouTube audience, or some of my subscribers, to come up with some questions, and I answer them to the best of my ability. That's the next part, we're going to answer Brandon Mitchell's questions here. And uh, then after that, we got 1985 dude, a.k.a. Chris Stillwell, a uh, guy who's old school just like I am, you know, he, he has some questions that I that he wanted to ask. Uh, now, here's some of, uh, Brendan Mitchell asked me several questions, and one question I, he asked me that I'm kind of not sure if I'm going to answer or not, I think I will, just because he's, you know, he's, he's cool in my book, of course, and I don't know how cool it is. I still haven't watched those movies that you got me yet, but uh, I will. I've been just busy with a lot of other stuff and watching other stuff, but I will get to that. But anyway, uh, let's see. What is your favorite movie of all time? Well, that's an easy one. Well, I guess it could vary, but I'm definitely going to say Back to the Future Part 2. And what a random, random pick, eh? Well, the reason for that is because I believe that, yes, Back to the Future. You know, and, and you know, like most people will say, you know, like uh, the first part of what when they make a movie... Like, the first one's always better than the second or third one. Sometimes not always true, though. I mean, it, it can vary. But uh, I believe Back to the Future Part 2 is the best, just because of the fact that I uh, I like how they go into the future. I mean, just think, it'll be another seven or six years from now when the year 2015 will come, you know? Now, I don't know if everything will happen like what was predicted in the movie, but, like, look at Pepsi's new design, you know? Didn't Pepsi kind of look <clears throat> somewhat like that? Well, maybe not so much, but, like, the logo kind of have a futuristic look, kind of. In fact, I kind of like Pepsi's new logo uh, compared to the old logo. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, anyway, just look at that. Or, like, uh, clothing styles or, or vehicles. Maybe they will never fly, but who knows? You never know. <laughs> I do believe that some of the things that were predicted in that movie will happen, but not everything, you know. I mean, I'm sure we'll still look like this, we'll still dress like the way we do, but technology will be a lot bigger, and HD stuff will be bigger, and everything will be bigger. You know, they, they say everything's bigger in Texas. Well, I think in the future, far from the future, as we get closer to 2015, I think, uh, yes, I do believe that uh, some of the things that we're staying in the movie will actually happen. Not everything, you know, but try to be as realistic as I can, but, you know. Second question, how long have you lived on your own for? Well, I've been living on my own for 18, well, ever since I was 18 years old, ever since I graduated from school back in June of 2002, I had moved out of my family's place in August of 2002, and I uh, pretty much been living on my own since. I moved here to the to go to college for radio broadcasting, yes, believe it or not. Even though I don't have equipment or whatever, like Ron's Fox or some of these DJs that you see <coughs> on YouTube or wherever. But I am a former DJ. I know how to do it. You know, it's not tough. Uh, the only reason I'm not doing it no more is because the guy I worked for, well, for two reasons. First of all, around here, it's hard to get a job in radio because they want a college diploma more than in your experience. A person could have 20 years of experience being in radio, but if they don't have the college diploma, they're nothing, you know? So it's like, well, okay, whatever. And secondly, because the the stage manager that I used to work for became a total dickhead, and I, and I don't care if he even sees this video or not, <clears throat> you know, or if anybody that knows him sees this video, you could tell him that right in front of his face, I really don't care, you know, to Travis Ryder, a pine and I for one, he, and I'm happy to mention his name, he totally changed, you know. He used to be back in the day when I met him back in 05 or 04, a cool guy, a guy that I could relate to, a guy that I thought we could be friends, you know, maybe become friends, you know, just like I was with everybody else that, work, that works there at, or worked at the time. But then too many changes happened and he got a big head and I just don't want to, you know, I just won't put up with that anymore. He needs to learn to take people seriously and not treat them as a joke. And 
until he learns to take me seriously, I'll never work for him again. You know? And I'm telling you that right now. You know? But anyway, uh, uh, so what we... Yeah, so 18... Well, ever since I turned 18, I lived on my own. And I've been pretty much living on my own since for the last six and a half years. And I recommend it to anybody that lives with their parents. I know Sean Phillips lives with his parents. He has a pretty cool setup, though. And I think the direction that he's going, he should just stay with his parents, save some money, and then when the big times do come, you know, as far as his bigger goals, then pursue other things. Then pursue a chance to move on. Brandon Mitchell, I, I think he should get his own place. But he but remember, he lives in California. And it's places like that, it's, it's, it's tough, I'm sure, to get a, you know, even get a one-bedroom apartment. They cost a lot. Over here in Minnesota, it's easy. Now as you have <clears throat> some sort of income, you can easily get a, a an apartment, you know. So it's not that tough. Okay, let's see. I want to see what time we got here. Oh, we got enough time here. Let me make this quick here. All right. What is your favorite day of the week and why? Well, my favorite day of the week used to be, well, used to be Mondays, just because of Monday Night Raw. Uh, it used to be Fridays, just because I used to have every Friday off. But now I'm enjoying Saturdays a lot more because I have pretty much every weekend off. So once in a while, or this has been a, became a tradition for a while now, that I've been doing Saturday night hangouts with people, you know, with certain friends or whatever, doing something at least every Saturday. <clears throat> well, this coming Saturday would be different because we gotta. I have to work because of, uh, of uh, uh, what's we call it. Uh, I forgot what, what we're doing here, what we're doing on Saturday, or this week, uh, but uh, it's not important anyway, uh, so I have to be there. Uh, let's see, and when did you start watching WWF, and are you still watching it now? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, WWF, WWE, I've been, you know, I've been a fan for almost 19 years, in fact, on January 1st, it'll be officially 19 years since I've been watching wrestling, or, you know, since... I became a fan. I started watching when I was six years old, or five or six years old, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, I've been watching it ever since. And I started growing up with watching it with uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. And <coughs> he was a big idol to me as far as a wrestling legend. And uh, when I got a chance to meet him back over two and a half years ago, one on one, he was the first interview I ever got to do. Uh, it, it definitely worked out and I you know it was great to talk to him one on one privately in his hotel room just one on one no cameras no nothing just a tape recorder some questions myself and him <laughs> on a Saturday morning you know and let's see how much time we got here got enough to answer a couple more questions here uh, let's see so who is your favorite stand up comic well uh I got I got some good favorites here. I got uh, <clears throat> you know like Eddie Murphy, but uh, I think my top three anyway: Andrew Dice Clay. You gotta love the Dice Man. George Carlin, the late great George Carlin, and the late great Sam Kinison. I mean, there's so many good comedians out there that could have done stand up, like even Robin Williams. I mean, he he could still do stand up now. You know, one thing I hate about comedians is when they <clears throat> and, and I know most people will say, well, geez, you know, they, it's, it's cool when they go and do other things, you know, play other roles. No, comedians should only play com com comedic roles, you know. That's what brought them to the dance. You, I mean, I can't picture Bill Murray, even though he's done serious movies before, but Bill Murray, to me, the Bill Murray I know, is a comedian, is a funny guy. That's what he should stick with. Don't be doing a serious role. If it means getting a Academy Award, <clears throat> I'm sure you want to brighten your horizons, but like even have Robert Williams play a psycho, I think that's quite wrong just because Robert Williams is a comedian, all right? Most people will probably disagree with me. Most people will probably, probably in their comments, they'll say, Frankie, you don't know what you're talking about. Stop speaking Japanese. Well, first of all, I don't know how to speak Japanese. And second of all, I think I know what I'm talking about. But other people are, you know, I mean, you're, you have the right to your own opinion, obviously. So, you know, whatever works. But uh, let's see here. Yes. So, 
In this last and final part, I will answer the rest of uh, Brett, Brandon Mitchell's questions. He has two more left to ask. And then uh, we'll finish it off with uh, Chris Stillwell's questions, so, a.k.a. 1985 dude. So we'll see you for the final part of Frankie's Q&A.